What's going on everybody? Lil Chris here and in today's video I want to start teaching you how to program using the C-sharp programming language. I've been a software developer now for 14 years. It is what I went to school for. I have an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and a master's degree. And when I got my master's degree I was given the opportunity to teach at the university that I graduated from for a few semesters. And I now want to take those lessons that I taught and bring them to the YouTube community for anybody that might be interested in learning how to program. So let's begin. To write our programs, we will be using Microsoft Visual Studio, the Community Edition. This is a free development environment that you can download, and I will provide a link in the description where you can download it from. The types of programs that we're going to build are going to be console applications. And if you don't know what a console application is, it is this little command prompt window that you can find in any Windows operating system, where most of your interaction is going to come from the keyboard. So let's build our first console application. Let's go up to the File menu item under New and select Project. Select the Visual C Sharp programming language and then select consultapp.net framework. We do want to know where our program is going to be created, so do note the location and then give your program a name. I'm going to call this one Lesson 1. And the development environment is nice enough to give us this lovely template of code that can actually be quite overwhelming to new programmers. But for now, let's just ignore everything except for this main method here because this is where we're going to write all of our code right in between these curly braces here. The first program that everybody learns how to create is the Hello World program. It is just a simple message outputted to the screen that says, Hello World, I can program in whatever programming language you're learning at the time. To do that in C Sharp, we use the console class. When we type the period, the IntelliSense is going to show us all the different types of methods and attributes that belong to the console class, but there's only two particular types of methods that we're going to be interested in. One that is used to output data to the screen, and the other that is meant to take data in from the keyboard. To output data to the screen, we're going to call the writeLine method, and in between double quotes is going to be our message. Hello world, I can program in C Sharp and then we end our line of code with a semicolon. And believe it or not, we're now done. Let's see our program run. Up at the top of the toolbar is a start button. So just click that button and our program will build and then launch. Well, what just happened? Where's our program? Well, what happened is, is that when we click the start button, we're actually trying to debug our program. And what is happening is that our line of code executes but then our program is done because that's all we asked it to do. So what we're going to do to get our program to stay up just so we can see our message is that we're going to ask data in from the keyboard by calling the readLine method. We're going to use this as a pause simulation. So I'm just going to write a simple comment that says pause. Now let's see what this does. And there's our program. Hello world. I can program in C Sharp. And our blinking cursor right here is telling us that we are waiting for a user to hit the Enter key in order for the program to proceed. So when I hit the Enter key now, our program is going to close. Just like that. Now that we've outputted a message to the screen, let's take data in from the keyboard and do something with it other than using the Enter key to close the program. To take in data from the keyboard, we will be using the readLine method again, so let's have a closer look at it. We can see the IntelliSense says that it reads the next line of characters from the standard input stream. This is literally referring to the keyboard. What I want you to take note of is this keyword, string. What this is saying is that the readLine method is going to return data of type string. And in order for us to capture that data, we have to store it inside of a variable that is also of type string. So let's create that variable. Let's start by using the keyword string, and then we're going to give our variable a name. And there are rules to naming a variable. It must begin with an underscore or a letter. 
It cannot begin with a number, though a variable name can have a number in it. And it can also not begin or have a special character. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to name our variable input. And in order to assign data to it, we use the equal operator. So whatever's on the right side of the equal operator will get assigned to whatever's on the left side of the equal operator. So now we're going to call our read line method again. Only this time, we're not just going to hit the enter key, we're actually going to type some data in before we hit the enter key. And when we do hit the enter key, everything that we typed in will get stored inside of the input variable. So let's take that input variable and then just output it back to the screen. Let's see what this does. You can click the start button. Our program is launched. Hello world, I can program in C sharp, except instead of just hitting the enter key to close the program, I'm going to type a message. And when I hit the enter key this time, that entire message is going to get stored inside of the input variable, and then it's just going to get reprinted back out to the screen, just like that. Now our blinking cursor is waiting for us to hit the enter key again in order to close the program, even though it's the same exact read line method, so I can actually type something in and then hit the enter key, but then the program is just going to close. But our program is not very informative, is it? Meaning that when we see this message that says, hello world, I can program in C-sharp, and then there's this blinking cursor, what are you supposed to do? Well, as the developer, we know that we're waiting for data to come in from the keyboard so that we can assign it to a variable, and then we're going to take that variable and then just reprint it back out to the screen. But your typical user is not going to know what to do when they're just staring at a blinking cursor. So let's change our program up a little bit to be more informative for a user. Let's start by asking a question. We're going to write something to the screen again, only this time we're going to call the write method versus the write line method. Let's ask, what is your name? The difference between write line and write is that when you call the write line method, after it displays the message that you want onto the screen, it's going to move the cursor to the next line of the console window. Whereas the write method will display your message and then leave the cursor on the same line. So what we expect to see is that the first line of our program is going to say, hello world, I can program in C sharp. And then on the next line, it's going to ask, what is your name? And then after that message, it's going to display the blinking cursor. At that point, we're now waiting for data to come in from the keyboard so that we can take that variable and output it to the screen, except we're going to add more to the message by saying, hello, whatever I type into the keyboard, and then say, welcome to the world of C sharp. And to be more informative, we're going to add one more message that tells the user to press the enter key to close the program. Let's see all of this run. Press the start button. Our program is building and then it launches. Hello world, I can program in C sharp. What is your name? My name is Lil Chris. Hello Lil Chris, welcome to the world of C sharp. Press enter to close the program. So when I hit the enter key, the program closes. So that'll do it for today's lesson. I hope that I was able to pique your interest in learning the C-sharp programming language. If I have, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to cover more in depth on the different data types that you can use when creating a variable. Take care, everybody.